Well, hey, everybody. It's Howard, and today we've got another great podcast. We know that you love real estate and community, and if you're here watching this, uh, it's all about island life, right? So island life, meaning Whidbey Island, Kamano Island, Stanwood, which is not on the island, but really close to Kamano Island. But on top of that, we've got our special guest, Jeff Smith today, and he is all about the conservation programs, the uh, the Teddy Roosevelt. He's going to just, just give us a little bit more insight. Paul, uh, anything you want to add as we begin? Jeff, what's awesome about having you on and what we want to touch on is your Venture Forth brand is, I don't know that many realtors like you who really specialize in kind of the outdoor lifestyle, parks, trails, you know, all the, all the, all the best things, the Pacific Northwest. And um, I love that your your passion is what's kind of driving you, and um, and so having you on to talk about the the organizations that you support, but also just kind of your expertise on these different markets, um, I think is going to be really really interesting for people who are considering those areas. Yeah, I'm I'm excited to be here. <laughs> I love that I'm in a business where I can kind of put my own unique spin on it and attract like-minded individuals and all that. It's great. So Jeff, let's just start off by talking about Venture Forth. Obviously, you've got a great background and you know uh, you are the classic North, I guess, Northwestern. I mean, love hiking, um, biking, the trails, you're a motocross guy. I'm, and that just naturally led you into wanting that to be part of your real estate uh, experience and con consultation and sales and everything. So then you created this Venture Forth brand. So just give us a little bit of that insight. Yeah, I grew up riding motorcycles, getting outside. Um, you know, I grew up in kind of the era era of you know when video games started coming out and unlike most kids i still played outside a lot um so that's kind of where the passion came from was just always being outside on a dirt bike um you know played a little bit of sports but honestly it was mostly just me in the woods kind of deal my buddies and i would go paintballing or airsofting or racing each other around the trails all that kind of stuff um and then from there once i went into college, went to WSU over in Pullman. That's kind of really where the the hunting and fishing activities really took off was met a few lifelong friends there that I've made. And uh, they got me into that. And it's just been an awesome adventure ever since. Just being outside, it's been a huge passion of mine, really. Yeah, so give us a little insight to um, the Venture Forth brand. So, you know, where did you come up with that? And why is that important for you? Yeah, you know, obviously being John L. Scott agent, I've got a lot of awesome backing from the brand itself and great office leadership. But for me, the Venture Forth brand was important to kind of help differentiate myself from all the other agents out there that people have the opportunity to choose from. You know, um, oftentimes when I'm working with buyers or sellers, I'm not the only agent they've interviewed. So for me, Venture Forth was more creating my brand of saying, hey, this is who I am as a person. I love being outside and I like working with people that are like-minded, love being outside also, because at the end of the day, you know, your home is kind of your your base camp to me for all of my adventures. And that's why I live in Stanwood, because Camino's a short bridge away. There's lots of parks, there's beaches, all that fun stuff that we can take the dogs to. But also, I'm less than an hour from the Mount Baker uh, Wilderness and National Forest, so there's a lot of stuff that we can go do out there. Um, for all my overlanders out there, uh, my Gaia GPS app is nowhere near full. There is a lot of trails still left for me to explore. I mean, it's just awesome how much there is to do and see in this area, less than an hour drive from my front door. So that was important to me to get a little bit out of the city and be able to access all this outdoor stuff. And I found that a lot of the clients I work with are pretty like-minded. They like going out on the weekends, enjoying the outdoors, even if it's, I mean, it's the Pacific Northwest, it rains all the time. So you just got to buy a good rain jacket and get outside. So Jeff, uh, you know, you've put out a really great video recently. 
and it was talking a little bit more about this venture forth and you, and you want to create an awareness actually for people who live in the northwest uh, uh specifically uh because you know give us a little history lesson there's this guy named theodore roosevelt which we all know right uh as you know as, as a president but then he actually started the the national park system as we know it today and so give us a little bit of that insight and what is the awareness you're trying to create yeah really for me again obviously the outdoors is important to me but here in Washington specifically, but also the country as a whole, we're very lucky to live in a country where Theodore Roosevelt helped create the national park system, which set aside millions of acres of land that would always be open to the public. Um, and to me, that's super important because it allows us to get outside. You know, you're not, when everything's privatized, it really makes it so you don't have access to land. You can't enjoy the great outdoors. So having access to public lands is very important to me and it should be very important to a lot of people. Um, so the Theodore Roosevelt Conservation Program, which is what I donate money towards, is a nonpartisan program that has worked with the past several administrations and not to get political, but obviously the past several administrations have been very <laughs> one way or the other. So to me, it was important to find a uh, program or a group that it didn't matter what partisan was in office, they could work with people to get or to make sure that we still have access to public lands and we are protecting the environment that we live in. Because at the end of the day, we all have to live and breathe and drink clean water and um you know that's important to protect for generations to come so that kind of goes hand in hand with real estate obviously we all know that we have a supply shortage a drastic supply shortage especially in this region where theoretically you can really only build north or south you know we've got the uh puget sound <laughs> over to the west and the cascades over in the east so mountains and water kind of restrict us to building north or south so um i think it's important that real estate developers look at the land that we are using and making sure that um you know we're cohabitating basically with our environment and ensuring that for generations to come you know this doesn't become a concrete jungle i wanted to ask you jeff um you you're in sandwood you grew up on woodby island um, you serve Camino Island. Um, you definitely would have buyers that that you meet with that are trying to make a decision on where they're going to move. Maybe they um, are remote workers and can now choose where they want to live or at least don't have to commute into Seattle as often. Maybe they're retiring. Um, when you're meeting with buyers who are looking at the markets that you serve the most, which, which is Stanwood, Camino Island, up through Skagit County, into Woodby Island, like how do you go through and explain Sandward versus Camino Island, and you know, home values versus, you know, amenities and everything like that. Stanwood's definitely growing a lot. Um, we have had a lot of developments that, I mean, I've got Lennar going in across the street from me and we've uh, got a couple more developments going in right next door. Um, so Stanwood is growing. There is growth challenges there as there always is. Um, but Stanwood's kind of being recognized as we're a close jump to the freeway. So this is, if I've got buyers that are more young professionals like myself, where they may only have the ability to work from home, say once or twice a week, but they still have to go into work. You know, the commute's not fun it, it never is but at least up here it's more tolerable because you're a short jump to the freeway you can get on i-5 and go south or go north but most people have to go south so if again if they're a young professional they still have to go in the office every now and then i tend to recommend stanwood or the arlington area if you're looking to get out of the city but still need to go into work. Stanwood Arlington is kind of what I recommend. Um, but if you can be full work from home or you only have to go in once a week or a couple times a month, then Camano or Whidbey Island is a great um, alternative. Camano and Whidbey Island pricing, you definitely get more bang for your buck there. The square price per square footage is lower. Um, and you can usually get more land too with your home as well. So if that's important, if you've got dogs or kids and you need a yard or want some property, then that's kind of where I 
tend to recommend buyers go or obviously Skagit County as well. But the island communities do offer a lot. Um, the cool thing about Camino is it's just a bridge. So if you want the island lifestyle, but you still want conveniences like Costco <laughs> or Walmart or whatever your big box store of choices, you know, you're 20 to 30 minutes away from Smoky Point or Mount Vernon. So that's a great option. Whidbey Island, if you're on the south end of the island, you're going to have to make that 45, 50 minute drive up to Oak Harbor or take the ferry over into uh, Muckleteo and then drive into Everett kind of deal. So it really comes down to what you want your lifestyle to be. How slow down do you want to be? How convenient do you still want things? And so it's just a, all about finding that blend of what's your lifestyle versus your work and all of that. Well, living in Muckleteo myself and being literally downtown uh, in Muckleteo, but you know, as soon as I hop on that ferry and I'm over on Woodby Island, for example, I don't know, just psychologically, my brain just shifts. Something happens where I do feel like I'm on island time. Like literally everything slows down a bit. And uh, I don't know, that's kind of like freeing, relaxing. There is something to that. And I think that's part of the reason why people are like, wow, I don't want this lifestyle anymore. And I can still work. There's still high-speed internet. And so you are finding people are gravitating toward this island life, right? So whether it's Kameno or even uh, Woodby Island, which I recently discovered is the fourth largest uh, island in the continental United States. So it's actually really large, you know, between Langley and Coopville and Oak Harbor and you got Green Bank and, you know, there's all these towns in, in, and that are really much, I mean, it's all about community, uh, not just island life, but about that community life life, which is just really unique. I mean, uh, so you grew up on Whidbey. I mean, give us a little bit of that insight. I grew up on the south end of the Whidbey. I was probably seven-ish minutes from the ferry. It's it, it's a whole nother world for sure. I mean, island time is definitely the perfect way to describe it. Uh, if you're on time, I don't think you're originally from Whidbey. You know, everybody's probably five minutes late to everything. <laughs> so it's it's a slowed down lifestyle for sure um i can't i mean even to this day i can't go into a grocery store without running into somebody i know so just know that if you go to a grocery store plan to spend uh whatever it takes your normal shopping time plus 20 minutes at least so it's it's a cool community it's it was awesome to grow up there i still go back all the time obviously several times a month um that's the other nice thing i like about stanwood is it's a fairly short drive for me or a quick ferry ride over there um but yeah lots to do on Whidbey there's a lot of cool local businesses in downtown Langley downtown Coopville everybody's friendly treats you well um lots of local restaurants that I love village pizzeria in Langley if you haven't been you have to go <laughs> uh pickles deli in Clinton is still hands down to this day my favorite deli uh, been to quite a few and nobody can beat their Italian <laughs> sandwich. So um, there's there's just a lot of cool things to do on Whidbey. And they've got, man, my current listing right now on Whidbey backs up to 700 acres of protected forest, which is just all hiking and mountain biking trails. And I've seen people on horseback through there. It's just, there's a lot of cool things about Whidbey. Um, and you know, in the Pacific Northwest, a lot of our beaches are pretty rocky, but if you go over the Double Bluff over on Whidbey, that's a super sandy beach. It's got a lot of uh, low tide, shallow areas. It's actually where a lot of people go skimboarding. It's where I learned. I'm not good at it, <laughs> but it's a pretty cool sport. Um, so there's just there's a lot of cool and unique things to do on Whidbey. It's it's just an awesome community. Uh, so for any dog lovers out there, I think uh, that Double Bluff Beach, right? You want to have a day with the dog or dogs. Uh, it's sandy, um, you know, and it's it just goes forever. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if it's technically an off-leash, but, but like most people have their dogs are off-leash. And it is just the most amazing beach. If you uh, love dogs and you want to get away for a day, uh, and of course there's e EB's Landing as well, which is one of the best just 
it's not quite a hike. It's just this lovely just beach walk up along the cliff. I mean, there's just, yeah, there's just amazing places that are so close to home that, that people should be aware of. Uh, and, you know, like, for example, your listing, uh, you know, who are the people? Are they people just on Woodby Island that's taking a look at it? Or, you know, it, it, you imagine, of course, tons of people from outside the area, but they have to commit to this island lifestyle. Are there second home buyers? Are they primary home buyers? Where are you finding there mostly? Um, so for my listing specifically, yeah, it's it's probably going to be a second home buyer um, just due to the nature of the listing. It's a five bedroom, five and a half bath house. So every bedroom has its own ensuite bathroom. It was actually built as a bed and breakfast. So my current owners use it as their primary residence, but the previous owners used it, ran it for 25 years as the Eagle's Nest Inn. Um, so to see somebody come back and bring a bed and breakfast back to the island, that would be that would be awesome to see. Um, obviously, that's a very unique buyer, but I've had the people interested in that. I've had people from Seattle and California um, looking at a second home where they could bring their family because it's it's a huge house, so they could bring their family, have family vacations, and then maybe Airbnb it when they're not using it. So. There's a lot of opportunities there for that listing, for that type of property. Venture Forth is the brand. You're doing uh, motocross, mountain biking, camping, all that kind of stuff. How does Stanwood, Camino Island, how do they rate on um, just purely the outdoor lifestyle rating? Um, like, I don't, I don't know the Stanwood area very well. I mean, are you basically, because you're close to other areas, Therefore, it's or is there actually good trail systems in Stanwood itself? Stanwood's more, I mean, it kind of started as a farming community. So we have a lot of farms around us and now it's becoming more of a bedroom community because we have so many developments coming in. Um, so and there's there's a few local parks that are great for families to go to. But I would say Stanwood's more along the lines of it's just convenient for me to jump onto the freeway and go up to the North Cascades National Park or go into the Mount Baker National Forest. Um, that's, that's more of how I view Stanwood. It's just very convenient to go out and do outdoor things for the day. Like if, if I don't have any showing scheduled for Saturday, it'd be super easy for me to wake up in the morning and be back by five or six o'clock back in time for dinner and have had a full day out adventuring. Um, that's no problem. Camino uh, has a lot of beach parks, so that's pretty cool. They do have some hiking trails in the middle of the island also. Um, so I would rate, if you're looking for hyper local stuff um Camino and Whidbey Island is probably going to be more of your go-to spots well I mean I'm, I'm feeling like I'm living a very boring lifestyle Jeff and so thank you for reminding me about all the things I should be doing on a Saturday um so so thank you for that it, it's it's inspiring me maybe I should get out a little bit more often so it's good to have you on man yeah, happy to help. If anybody has any questions or wants to know a local trail to go to, whether it's off-roading or hiking or whatever, I've got apps, I've got places to go, happy to help and happy to make sure that your home fits into your lifestyle too. I think that's really important nowadays, more so than ever, honestly, because just the state of the world, everybody's stressed out. You got to come home, feel relaxed and be close to what you want to be close to at the end of the day. Well, Jeff, I mean, it's just so exciting uh, to have you be so passionate about the outdoors. And of course, you know, people want to know more about outdoor lifestyle. So you're both realtor as well as outdoor <laughs> venture expert, uh, also focused on conservation. Uh, we just appreciate you so much in terms of the work that you're doing, the clients that you're serving, uh, the message and advocacy that you're doing, all, all of that. So we just, uh, again, appreciate you so much uh, in terms of uh, just your approach to clients and business. So thank you for your time today. Uh, if you want, of course, to meet Jeff, talk to Jeff about real estate, whether you're a buyer or a seller, investor, or, you know, of course, just want to talk about the great outdoors here in the Northwest, uh, you know, you can easily reach Jeff. And, and so thank you so much for uh, watching uh, today. Uh, hopefully you got a little bit more insight into the local communities, uh, the island, Stanwood, as well as just to get to know Jeff here a little bit. So again, thanks, Jeff, and uh, we'll see you out in the outdoors.